It's the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But what controls the head? The neck. So I feel like my wife's the neck. She, she has the best posture to move me and help me keep my vision, help me keep my sight, help me keep my perspective in place. You see what I'm saying? You ever had a crook in your neck? Absolutely. That thing will give you a headache. headache. Come on, stop playing, boy. You don't want to go to sleep. Me? No, you don't want to Nothing. Walk. nothing. You don't want to do nothing. <laughs> no doubt. My wife, I used to, me and my wife used to bump heads because I took the disc assessment. I'm a high I and a high D. She's a high S, a high C. That means she's very analytical. She likes systems. Yep. She likes processes. Yep. I'm like, man, let's just go and get it done. Yep. So I feel like when it comes to our family, when it comes to building wealth and everything else with our businesses, I'm all about moving the needle like the offense. I'm trying to put up points. Mm. My wife is more defense. Mm. I didn't view it like that. Mm. So whenever she would say that's not a good move or we don't have the budget, I felt like she was trying to hold me back. And I was holding resentment in my heart. So when we would have marriage counseling sessions, because I believe you got to invest in your marriage, right? Mm. So when I was, as I'm having these sessions, these things will come up and I realized her profile personality type is just more conservative. So I realized like, oh, she's just in protection of everything that I've been able to build. And so I had to humble myself. And so if she says we can't afford it or this is not the time or we're on a spending freeze, I'm rolling my eyes, I'm sucking my teeth, but I know that, hey, you know what? It's she's, not, she's just in protection mode. The man is the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But what controls the head? The neck. So I feel like my wife's the neck. Okay, so I want to just get right into this. What he's, uh, in this video, what he's saying, I don't believe is inherently a hundred percent incorrect right i don't think it's a it's just i'm just gonna jump in and be like he's wrong and this and that i'm not saying that in the least bit but what i am saying is this mindset is actually doing more harm than good to relationships and i know you might be like river why like you know, he's applauding a woman. He's saying that, like, you know, she has her place and that she is the neck. And, you know, he just said what controls the head, it's the neck. So he's saying that, you know, a woman has control over her man. You know, how could you disagree with this? I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I disagree with this because a lot of women don't know their place. Bottom line, a lot of women do not know when to hold them or when to fold them. You give them this much room to say that they control anything and they feel like it's their show, they're the headliner and they're running everything, including you, including your mind, including your pockets, including your time. It is very seldom that you see women who are with men who are trying to play the back seat. Who are like, nah, you know, he's the one that's in control. He's the one that says A, B, and C. He's the one that guides the situation. He's the leader. You have a lot more women who are saying, I wear the pants. It's me. I run the show. I'm the one who does this. I'm the one who does that. And what I noticed is that a lot of people from I don't I don't know the names of the generations, okay? I'm not going to lie. I don't keep up with the time frames or of the generations, but a lot of the people that I would say from back in the day which would be considered like, you know, my grandparents' generation, a lot of these men were assertive. Okay? They were not talking about this happy life, happy wife, happy life foolishness. They were not about that. Okay, everybody had their role, but they were the ones that were respected. They were the ones that were, you know, the at the top of the totem pole. It was them, the wife, the kids. Okay, like it was just a very known thing. But you see, after that generation, all the way down to, uh, I would say, the generation right before me, this whole happy wife, happy life thing has had these men in the chokehold. <laughs> okay? We hear it. If you don't believe me, listen to the music from the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, early 2000s. This happy wife, happy life, do everything to please a woman, you know, fall to her feet, kiss her feet. You know, if she says this, it goes. If she leaves, I'm this, I'm that, I'm bent out of shape. Like that whole mindset had 
the man in a chokehold. To their detriment. Why? Because the woman took it and ran with it. So not only is it happy wife, happy life, not only is that the, is it that if I'm not happy, you're not happy. It has now come to a thing that only my happiness matters. In that happy life, um, happy wife, happy life mentality, a lot of the men put their wives' needs before themselves, didn't communicate in a certain way, weren't effective, uh, effectively communicating their feelings. They were hiding their masculine traits so that their woman would feel happy and feel good and feel secure in the relationship. Oh, I can't look at another woman. I can't do that because I don't want my wife to get mad. I can't exude my masculine behavior because I don't want her to get mad. You know, happy wife, happy life. I can't do that. I have to walk around with blinders. If a woman is nice to me in the grocery store, I have to blatantly disrespect this woman that I do not know so that my wife will be happy. It created that scenario. An unhealthy way of thinking. That's why you have these women right now acting like they, they run the show. <laughs> like You have these women thinking that they run the show. Can't tell them nothing. Can't tell them no different. They're like, oh, yeah, I got it like that. Mm-hmm, yeah. I'm the one. It's me. I'm the pro. I'm the because you are addition. I'm the one. Remember, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Hello. Should men be um, glorify their wives? that do not cause them stress, that are peaceful, that are respectful, that are cooperative, that are submissive, that are um, aiming towards the same goal, the same vision, the same purpose with their husband's best interest at heart, with their man's best interest at heart, that will do anything to create a comforting, safe, reliable space for him. Should those men gl glorify their wives? Absolutely. And that is why I don't, uh, that's why I said I don't 100% disagree with what he's saying. Because he is speaking from a place that he um, has clearly, you know, as he's saying, he feels that he has found the perfect balance for him and for his lifestyle. And so he honors her. Women should be honored if they're honorable. If they're honorable. Right? So I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. However, it is important that we know that it's not just about just honoring a woman because she is one. It's about traits. It's about what she exudes. You can't just be uh, walking around. It's, it, that would not show traits of a good leader if you are allowing this person to just swing you by a thread to and fro just because of this rhetoric happy wife, happy life, or, you know, I'm the head, she's the neck, so gotta trust her, gotta lean on her, gotta rely on her, like, you're a leader. Trust your instinct as well. You can rely, if she's reliable, yes, you can rely on her, but it's your instinct, it's your leadership. But I want to know what you guys think about this. I could talk about this all day long. <laughs> I want to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.